Hi, welcome. I'm Pauline from Pauline's Quilters World and I'm here to show you a collection of our beautiful fabric bows. Now I'm doing this because a lot of people own our Sasha collection and I don't know if you're aware that there's over 18 different sizes in the fluoro yellow ones and I just want to show you some of the bigger sizes and what you can do with them. So when we talk about the bigger bows, we can see this one here and this one, we've used the four inch tool. The th we've done some of them with the three inch, some with the three and a half inch. Now these bigger ones are not in the set of 10. The set of 10 that we do like this set here, they're the most popular 10 out of the range of 18. But I just wanted to show you how you could have fun um, using up your scraps of fabrics and making some beautiful bows to go on your Christmas gifts, um, birthday gifts, adding to little girls' dresses, adding to quilts, just fun things that you can do with the tools besides just making a sashing or making bias. So if I'm going to make one of these bows, let's say we're going to make this one, for example. We've got the fabric and inside the fabric we've got some batting because we wanted to fill it out and make it sit really nicely. The nice thing about doing these on gifts, people always have these to keep. They could, they could then go on and use it for something else. I just think it's much nicer than going and buying, you know, the cheap stuff that we just throw in the bin. So I'm going to do a, three, a four inch wide one. So I'm going to use the four inch tool. Now it does use up a bit of fabric because I want it to be um, completely encased with um, the bow. I want the inside of the bow to have fabric around it as well. So I've cut the piece of fabric six inches wide. So I'm going to then fold the sides in just till they meet. And then I'm just going to press the first little bit with the hot iron. Then we thread it into the tool. So whatever size tool you're using, you might only want to make an inch wide bow. You would do exactly the same thing with the narrower tool. I'm going to use my awl and I just push it through to get it all the way through there. Then we're going to pin this into the ironing board and um, if you've seen me use the sashes before, you know I always use the double fork pin, the twin pin because I want equal tension on both sides of the fabric that I don't get with two separate pins. So we'll pin that in. Then we'll just spin this around just so you can see it a bit better. Put the tool against the sasha and we just push with the iron. And that'll just fold the fabric beautifully and even for you. And yes, you could do this if you were only doing a short strip without the sasha tool. But if you're making nice big bows and you want to have tails and everything on them, you'll have a long strip of fabric to do and you don't want to burn your fingers. And you want it to come out nice and neat and even, so the tool will do that for you. So there's our strip pressed. Now we'll open that out. Now I'm going to open this completely out. I've got a permanent crease line there that the tool has given me. I'm now going to cut a piece of batting just a little bit narrower than what this measurement is and lay it inside. Then I'm going to fold this back over and over. And I, I always use the Hobbs heirloom double-sided fusible batting for anything I do with quilting. So I have lots of bits left over. So I'm just using up all my bits and I'm going to press with the hot dry iron. That fuses the batting to my fabric. Turn it over and press this side. Just press it all the way through. And then the next thing we do is we fold this in and in. Now you can finish off the edges if you want. You could, you could sew this edge together. You could turn it this way. You could go to your machine so this is the wrong side out. You could go to your machine and stitch across there or you could quickly hand stitch it, but we haven't even done that. We've just left it open. So the wrong side's in the middle. We're just going to fold this in and in and overlap it a bit. 
like we have here. Now I just want to show you what we've done next. So I've just got my needle, hand sewing needle threaded with thread to match. And I'm just going to do a running stitch, like a gathering stitch across here. So just big gathering stitches, you don't need them too small. Push that through. And then all we do is we pull that up and gather it. Just let's do another stitch here. So now you can gather that in. Make sure you use a double thread because you're going to have a bit of um, tension on this. So we gather that in now and then we start to get that image of that bow happening. Then what we do next, so you'll anchor that off. Just do that. Anchor this off, just over stitch it to keep that. Whoops. And you can even wrap the thread around here a couple of times. Just finish it off. Then I'm going to make another piece to go around here to cover all of that stitching. So there's our little bow. Just move this along. I just went a bit too far with it. So there's our little bow. Now I'm going to make an inch strip to go around. So I've cut this piece two inches wide. I'm going to fold it in and in till it meets. So I'll put this one through the inch tool. And it just shows you that the sasha tools have lots and lots of uses. A lot of people think they're only made to fold your binding or they're only used to make your bias or they're only used to do a certain size sashings. But once you get used to using the tools, you'll find that you can use them in nearly every project that you make. And as you can see, using them to do things like this for gift wrapping is just fabulous. Because I think anybody would love to get a gift with a... Um, a fabric handmade bow on it that they can keep forever. There we go. So now I will just cut a piece. We wrap that around this one. Fold the ends, one end in. And this is where I use the Roxanne glue basted. Put some little dots of glue down. Put that one in place. Put some glue on here. Now I'm just going to fold this one back on itself and set it with the hot iron. Put some glue on here. Just tuck all that in to make it nice and neat. Oops, doesn't want to stick. This is where the little mini irons are fabulous because they can get in, you can do little fiddly things with them compared to your big iron. So there's our little trim around our bow. You could pull it much tighter if you wanted to, but I would just now hand stitch that. You can even, um, come back like with this one you can put a tie on it you can make an, a longer piece that's going to go right round the parcel and put that onto your um, parcel just by wrapping it around or you might like to put some string through this and use the string to to tie it to your to your parcel you might like to if you've got a little gift bag you might like to put this on the side you know, and how cute's that for people to receive something like that? You could do a double up bow. Here we've done two bows together, two different size tools. We put wadding in both of them. There's no wadding or batting in the piece that goes around them. So you could even tie that onto your parcel. Or if you're gift wrapping a parcel, put this on top. Just really, really special. You can make longer strips and put through the back of your loop. So we've just put this through the back of the loop. 
and then we've got another nice one. So if this was going to be a really, really big bag, you could put that on it and put that over the front of the bag. And they're so cute. Just love them. You can make smaller ones. Now, can you imagine this on your Christmas dinner table um, with your napkin in around, with the bow around the napkin? So there we go. We could set that out on our dinner plate with the little bow around the napkin. And I think they just add the special little touches that people don't usually think about. You know, like it's, it's just getting out there and getting some things collected up and make some things at this time, get, getting ready for Christmas. Like you could even use these to put onto your Christmas tree. Over here, we could hang these on the tree. So we could make our own little fabric bows to go on the tree. On our little jelly roll Christmas tree, I could make some bows to sit on this tree. I could make bows to, you know, big bows that I could put anywhere on any of my decorations. How about we give Santa a bow? You know, put a bow on his hat. So there's just all sorts of things that you can do just by simply getting out some of your scraps of fabric. No matter what colour you're going to use, use the sasha tools to their best advantage. And like people ask me, why did I design these big, big wide ones? Well, it's because of this sort of thing that we can do with decorating up why we need different size tools. So that's just a little package for you. I'd love to know that you're making up some gorgeous little bows ready for your Christmas table, ready for your Christmas gifts. I just think it will delight people to have something like this. Can you imagine if you've got a gorgeous little grandson making him a little bow tie? Put the tie through it. Now we've got a Christmas bow tie for him. Your little girl's dresses, put some little bows on them ready for Christmas. You know, you might have a, a plain dress. Why not dress it up with some bows? So I hope you've enjoyed just some of the little hints and tips on getting your sashes out, getting your fabric out and have fun and be creative. And do have a look at our YouTube channel. Have a, have a, have a, a really good um, wind through all of those videos that we've got there because there's so many things on our videos showing you all the different things that you can do with a complete set of sasha tools. So be, have fun, be creative and stay safe.